Hey guys, it's the Tech Prepper. Uh, today I want to show you how I make my maps for my soda activations. I use an application called AllTrails. Uh, there's a free version and a pro version that has a whole bunch of features that I really enjoy. Uh, so let's make some maps and uh, I'll show you what it's all about. The first thing we want to do is head on over to the AllTrails.com website and create an account. Then you're going to want to go ahead and download the app for your iPhone or Android device. Today we're going to be going over the Pro subscription uh, that has a couple of features that we need to be able to print and create our own offline maps and also it provides the ability to download some additional offline layers. I've been using the Pro version now for about 18 months and uh, while you can use all trails to download maps that are already out there, in fact that's what I did uh, the first part of my uh, user experience time with all trails, I decided that I needed some additional features to do the type of backcountry navigation I wanted to do. So let's talk about the uh, mission objective. Um, I'm going over here to Soda Atlas and I'm planning on doing a peak this weekend for summits on the air and it's called Elephant Mountain. And the reason why I'm going to Soda Atlas is I want to be able to grab the geolocation for that peak. And the one I'm interested in is Whiskey 7 Alpha Stroke Mike November 041. And all I'm going to do here is copy the latitude and longitude. Now that we have our geo coordinates in our clipboard, let's go over to All Trails, log in, then we can navigate from plan to create map. The first thing I like to do is create a waypoint that will represent our summit. So we'll give it a name and then in the latitude we will paste the latitude and then the longitude that we had copied from Soda Atlas and click Save. Now at this point it should center us on the map and we should be able to start to zoom out so we get a bit more detail. And as you can see there we have Elephant Mountain and we can see all the contour lines. Now I like to zoom out just far enough so that I can see where I'm going and where I'm starting. I plan to start on North 24th Street here. I know there's a cattle guard entrance. Take this 4x4 trail and then bushwhack from here to the summit, hopefully taking path of least resistance. So let's add a new waypoint. And I've noticed a bug here that you will need to be able to um, zoom out a little bit before you can actually see where it dropped you on the map. And you can actually see it drop this over here. So all we're going to do is drag this over to the entrance. And it's important that you do that first before saving uh, this waypoint. So let's go ahead and call that entrance. And we're going to do, we'll save that waypoint. Next, let's go ahead and set another waypoint at where we intend to park. And we'll call that parking spot. And again, don't save anything yet. You want this little uh, bubble to be purple still and just drop it right there. Then click Save. Now, you'll notice that the order is off. So what we want to do is click on Sort. And we will want to put the entrance on top, followed by the parking spot. And that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is draw the route. Now one really annoying bug I've noticed is turn off smart routing. It tries to outsmart you and it's just frustrating. So we'll turn that off and let's see hopefully it can hide titles. This software has a lot of bugs. So we're going to start on the entrance there. So I click there to start and what you want to do is put the crosshair uh, along whatever path you want to take. And you don't need to be perfect. Uh, you can. It's totally up to you. Uh, for me, I don't need a high degree of fidelity. I just want a general route. And as you'll notice here, this isn't as perfect as it should be, uh, but it does get the job done. And we now have a path to our parking spot. I want to zoom in just a little bit so I could see a bit more detail here. 
and it's probably not quite ready yet here. So let's go ahead and uh, figure out from our parking spot what's the best way to get to Summit. And I like to use the contour lines as a guide. So for those of you who don't know what contour lines are, it's the lines that um, are from here to here, and they represent how much elevation gain you're going to expect based on how far they are. Uh, the closer they are, the steeper elevation, the farther apart, the less elevation gain. So you wanna find a path that has these lines farther apart. Um, I don't know what the distance is on this map, as of yet, uh, on most of my maps, it's usually about 40 feet and the map will tell you. So let's go to this kind of plateau area here that looks pretty straightforward. And this path here also looks pretty good in terms of the contour lines being farther apart. And then we're gonna zoom in just a bit more. And I think the path that looks easiest here is probably to go along what looks like this this little ridge here. And if you want to take a longer route, you know, um, that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of eyeball what looks to be a, a decent route. And really, that's all there is to uh, creating this map here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click Save Map. And you'll notice here now that we have 3.07 miles from the entrance to the summit. Um, there are some nasty bugs in all trails. Like I said, it didn't keep the waypoints in the order that we had specified, uh, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Let's go ahead and try to also edit this map. There's a few things I wanna see if it'll let me do. Uh, the next one is I wanna be able to chart a course back. So I want to hit reverse here and it should have now given us the same path back and it should have doubled our mild mileage once this is done all right still showing 3.07 miles uh, i won't worry about that right now and then the other thing i'd like to do is give it a better name And what we'll do here is just copy the Soda Summit name here. And we'll have that be our map. And we will save that. Now, the one cool thing you can do with the Pro version is we can click on Print. And there are a handful of options here, so you can actually see that we can fully see our route here. So at this point, we can download a PDF or we can print it. Um, you can also zoom out, which is kind of nice, so you can orient this map in whatever position you want and get the right level of zoom and adjust the scale. So I typically like to go to landscape. It gives me a little bit more room. And then I want to zoom in quite a bit more there. And if I'm able to get as much of my... There we go. And that looks about right. So I'm going to go ahead and print this map out. Uh, another thing I like to do is create multiple maps that I can lay side by side and really zoom in. So let's go ahead and download this PDF. Okay, well that took a little bit of time, but let's go ahead and see what we have to work with. And there we go. We have our map. So we can even keep this as a PDF reference for future trips. And I'm going to go ahead and print this off. And uh, one thing to note, guys, is that um, I have been using a laminator that I purchased on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. Uh, but I'm printing and laminating all of these maps. Uh, it's actually kind of nice. The laminator was like $17 to $20. And I think I spent another 15 bucks on consumables. So for me, it is costing next to nothing to laminate these maps uh, and save me a lot of time from having to go to a... Uh, like, a place like Kinko's, for example. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, at least the walkthrough of creating the All Trails map. Um, I find it useful. I know a lot of people are adverse to anything that you have to pay for. Or All Trails does a good job of giving you a lot for free. But for the advanced features like being able to create your own map, offline uh, downloading of the layers, and uh, 
I think it's worth the money, especially if you're going to spend any amount of time in the outdoors. So just wanted to share that with you guys. That's how I typically plan most of my trips. And uh, like I said, I prefer to use the uh, traditional compass and map first. Uh, it forces me to really take a look at my surroundings. And then if I really get lost, um, at least then I could turn on the GPS uh, for a few minutes to uh, just double check where I think I am. And uh, that way I don't wear down the battery the entire time and uh, get a little bit of practice. And uh, yeah, all right guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.